You are listening to Real Men Feel with Andy Grant. Real Men Feel encourages men to allow and express all of their emotions. Despite what you may have been taught, all emotions do serve you. Real Men Feel is committed to engaging in discussions that most men aren't having, but all men can benefit from. All links mentioned in each episode are in the show notes found on the blog at realmenfeel.org. Now, let's get to it. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Real Men Feel. This is your host, Andy Grant. Ah, it, it, it's, uh, we're still in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic all around the world. Places are starting to loosen up. People are starting to leave their houses a little bit. The, you know, things like, might back on track. And during this time of isolation, uh, you may have become a slug, or you may have done some inner work and grown, like what, whatever it is, but you're coming into a brand new world. It's a chance to be a brand new person. It's your chance to decide, do I want to go back to normal? Did I like what was normal? You know, how do I want to run my life, run my business, run my relationships going forward? And so today I'm really excited to talk to someone about who helps men kind of unleash, uh, blossom and bloom into all that they can be. My guest today is dancer, artist, model, and muse, Maeve Swan, who guides and, guides and inspires men to become noble, powerful, masterful kings. Welcome to the show, Maeve. Hi, Andy. Uh, lovely to be here with you today. Cool, cool. So you, uh, you know, first one is, so you, you, you're a dancer and an artist. How, how do you navigate from, how does a dancer and artist become, become a coach to men? What, what, what was that path like? Mm, lo I love this question. So, well, the parallel I feel is the art by itself is very transformational. So I have found that if, if you do the art from the place of a deeper connection with your own soul and self and really express what you are here to express, it is extremely powerful and transformational. Mm. I've had uh, people uh, just from seeing my dance videos, you know, telling me how they've been deeply moved. They had like experiences happening to them. Um, there was, um, when people hear me sing, it was also like a powerful experience for them. I once had a woman and she came to me after after the mini concert and she said like how, like she thanked me and she was like full of gratitude because for her the experience was that my voice was going into her second chakra and healing a lot of stuff. So she had this completely profound experience just like from me expressing myself as an artist. Mm. So, um, you know, in that way, like a true art, when it comes from a right place, it could be extremely powerful and extremely transformational. Mm. And then, um, as for coaching for men, this sort of came about in a very unusual way, I feel. Do you wanna do you wanna hear the story? Yeah, let's go for it. I love unusual <laughs> stories. Awesome. I feel that for me, this is a story of how when you align to what you're meant to be doing in the world, life sort of moves towards you and gives you everything you need. Right. So um so I, I've been a coach for both men and women since 2014. And um, then, but you know, I, I just had like a practice that was one size fits all. And um, I, I did have like a few male clients, but it was just like, you know, regular coaching. I did the same thing for women and same thing for men. And then um, since 2018, I've been hearing intuitive voice and guidance that I am specifically to work with men. And, um, but you know, it, it took me quite, quite a while to get there. I had my own inner journey to my own inner process to get there and to align and all of it. So, so the story becomes interesting when, and you know, along the line, I had like a people, random completely people giving me books on male sexuality and they were sort of like you know i have no idea why i'm giving you this but you need to have this and you know at that time it didn't make much sense to me or to them but there was like a signs and guides along the path and um and then uh this year things became really kind of interesting specifically february march 
this is where and and right before the whole things happened with coronavirus i was like launching my first offer for men so it was like i feel it's very timely and you know it it, it there there is a purpose while this, while this is happening specifically right now so so what happened is that uh, there was a series of coincidences and um i had um the first one was um one of my followers he was watching to my dancing video and he felt like to reach out and tell me how he was moved by my movement and how um his particular experience was that by watching me move and dance and express myself in art he had um experience of his king coming out and you know want to become alive and so he put uh king in in all capital letters and you know at that time i didn't pay much attention then i had shortly after i had um a connection call with a friend of mine and he was like uh we were speaking about like how to um make my youtube ch channel come alive and in a conversation like he came up with the phrase king maker and it just resonated and i was like yes this is amazing and then the third step was like the most kind of like unreal so it's basically one of my followers uh again reached out to me and um and you know and he basically kind of helped me a lot by designing the whole business for me he's like a serial entrepreneur and uh, have a lot of experiences in this the space so he basically gave me the major strategic advice he gave me the message and like in a nutshell so you know it, it feels like everything i needed was like given to me and it came to me i i didn't have to um I didn't have to do a lot to make it happen. And this is how I feel like, you know, I'm on the right track. This is how I feel like it's, it's really guided and um, it, feels, it feels magical. It really feels magical to me. Yeah, yeah, I love when the, the synchronicities of the universe just line up and yeah, all that reinforces that, yes, this is what I'm meant to do. Uh, have you always been intuitive? Has, has that voice guided you through, through most of your life? Yes. Yes, I've always been intuitive since since a child. Um, I remember, uh, you know, m one of my first experiences when I was five, I remember speaking with my dad and telling him that I have a superpower to manifest cartoons on TV, <laughs> sort of on will. So like, you know, I, I was convinced that like, whenever I want, I can make them happen. <laughs> so. But then I feel like, you know, my, um, a lot of my intuitive abilities really came online when I became coach and started working with others. I feel like this is a whole other level of intuition that came online for me to support others. Cool. So, you know, talking about uh, the king waking up in men and, and you becoming the king maker, what, what does it mean today for a man to be a king? What, what does that merge mean? What is the resonance? Mm, I love this question. So um, for me, king is a man who knows exactly who he is. Like he has found his identity and he is on his mission. So he is fully on his mission and also he's in dominion over his kingdom so he has control and mastery and power over the life he is building and um you know with all of that he also have a powerful legacy he have a powerful impact on the world and whatever that be and it's different for for everyone but um, in a nutshell, that's what I feel the king is. What, what do you feel the king is? What, what is for you a king, to be a king? Yeah, no, I, 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 by what you're saying, yeah. For, for, first of all, you have to know thyself. You have to know who you are. And yeah, clarity of your values, clarity of your mission and purpose, and, and be acting towards that. And, uh, you know, talking about, you know, intuition and synchronicities. When, when all that's lining up, like that, that's your kingdom responding. That's how I take it. So yeah, you're, you're the the king, the leader, the the warrior, it's everything comes up in that king energy. 
Yes. I, I love that you're bringing up the warrior. I saw on your, in your group, um, you have on your Facebook banner, you have a four archetypes, warrior, lover, magician, and king. And for me, um, a king is a man who has found his perfect balance and harmony between the three archetypes. And that lo looks like it's not like it doesn't have to be. It's not usually equal for all the men. Every man has his own unique combination. So one man, one man's kingship could be like ninety percent warrior, and others could be like ninety percent magician. Or so it doesn't. It's not even, but it's his own unique signature and his own unique combination of of the three archetypes. So, so what are those three archetypes that, that you're seeing and that you, you play with? Yes, so I have a two levels. Um, I have like a deeper level and then a kind of like a rough estimate how I play with them. So in, in a deeper way, uh, we go into the four we just talked about. So warrior, magician, and lover. And then ultimately they come in, 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 they come alive in a king archetype when they are perfectly balanced and and when they work together harmoniously and you know when mission is um alive for a man when he's not leaking his power when he's full in his power and also in my world when he's sexually masterful and then um when i work just um you know more roughly like maybe in a, in a more uh, shorter container with the men, I have like less uh, time with them, then I translate those archetypes into more kind of culturally, um, maybe closer archetypes, which are alpha, beta, and omega men. And so there is a, a correlation. It's not exactly one-to-one. -one. The first one is a lot more elaborate and there are other archetypes as well. But, you know, there is like, if we want to do like a rough estimate, like I go to alpha, beta, omega. The, 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 the king notion is not a separate archetype. It's the, con it's the expression of the other three? Yes, that's how I see it. It's, it's kind of like a company. It, it's a perfect, unique combination of the other three for each unique individual man. Can each man be a king? Is, is that archetype, is that ability within every person, every, within every man? Yes, yes. I, I feel um, every man is, has a potential to become a king. And um, unfortunately, um, not all men would go a length to develop what it takes. Um, I, I feel it's kind of like an initiation that comes up for a man. Do, do you feel the same? Yeah, uh, especially I've been involved in a few initiations, so I very much agree with that. Um, yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and and in, in in older times in different societies, there were initiations. There were rites of passage for the man for the boy to become a man, right? To step into your kingdom and to realize that. And you know, Western society is, has lost a lot of that. So I think that's why a lot of men are lost. And and you know, I asked, is every you know, is this possible for one? Because I believe it is, but a lot of guys don't think it is, or they're so you know, they've never been told that they are powerful, that they have a mission, that they can create a mission and they can have purpose. They, they just go to a job they don't like every day, every week, every month, and then years have gone by and they're like, oh, great, this is what I am. And, you know, nobody has to live like that. Mm -hmm. cool. Yes, yes, exactly. I, I too feel it's um, initiation for that each man has available that goes around his building his full identity and, you know, deciding and finding out actually who he is um, in this world and what is he here to do, what are his superpowers and what he can, where is his mastery and what he can leave in the world. And um, 
it's quite a beautiful process i feel and when we speak about the initiation what i see happening it's almost like um identity crisis so it will when when man is sort of to enter the the initiation to become a king i see it often happening as divorce it's a very common or separation or you know affair or um you know uh, losing a job, bankruptcy, um, health issues, or just like a feeling of a not fully being alive with his purpose and his mission in the world, not fully being like, like it feels like um, a lot of time it feels like something is missing, or a lot of times it feels like, you know, I'm 90% there, I have built something, and you know, it had the purpose, but now like I feel something is missing. Yeah. And a lot of time, um, a man who come to work with me, they would say like, they would say like uh, 10, like I'm looking for this 10% and I want to find this 10% um, and be fully, fully on my mission. Yeah, I, I, I find lots of men, it's this, this, this yeah. hollow feeling and it often comes from doing everything that other people said to do as opposed yes. to what they're drawn to do. And, and again, not trusting their own intuition, not, not recognizing that voice of guidance that they have within themselves, uh, just hit, hitting all the, you know, uh, the degree, the business, the wife, the car, the, you know, whatever it is that society, their teachers, parents told them it meant to be a man. And then finding that, yeah, this, this empty, hollow meaninglessness to it. Um, but yeah, so it, it, it's, it's, it's great that, that I'm seeing, it sounds like you're seeing more men being aware of that and wanting to do something about it. Cool. Yes. So at, at, so at this point, do you still work with women? Have you completely shifted or you're, you're still working with, with both sexes? I do, yes. I, I do work with women as well. Um, my work with them has a different focus. So I have like almost like two different businesses to different visions to different set of packages everything is different what i what i do for women is i help them have a healthy and hot and sensual body which i call siren body and help them connect with um you know siren and the muse archetype which are around sexuality as well and so so cyber archetype is about sexuality and like freeing that and that not looks not just like you know sexual expression but it also looks like creativity and freedom and anything related to to life force and and with creative creation and um and then use energy, which is more ethereal. It's more like out of this world and it brings the inspiration and it's very um, out of this world. And like, I, I, I find like when we combine the two, like the, the, the power of the raw sexual energy and, and force combined with the muse energy that's like ethereal and out of this world, like I, I, I feel we, we get something that's completely irresistible to me, to to for 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 women and for men, for for all of us. Like I, I find this combination completely irresistible. Cool. There's a there's a phrase on your website describing your work that caught my that really caught my attention. That uh, you capture men through sexual desire and then use that desire to shape them into the best version of themselves. So could you expand on the notion of how you, uh, the, the capturing notion? Yes. Um, th this is actually the exact phrase that came from one of my clients. Mm -hmm. And so it's his words. And I loved it so much that I put it like, I, I, I feel like, like he hit the essence. And I, so I put it on a website. And, and uh, so um, what it means is like, um, you know, as, um, as an artist and a, as a dancer, as someone who is playing and embodying the siren archetype, I, I feel very free around expression of my own sexuality. It's like, um, you know, I, I don't know if you had a look at my Instagram page, but it's all about like, you know, 
um, erotic dance. Like I have clips of me doing erotic dance in lingerie and I have like a very artistic uh, photo shoot of me in a, in a luxury lingerie. And I love to play in that way. This is my art. This is how I express myself. And, and of course, like this is very, very attractive to men because, you know, of course men would love expression of sexual energy, but I also find when the way I do it, it's like I get, um, I, just, I, I just feel like I get a lot of respect from men that, that I don't see happening so much elsewhere with, with like other women who are in a similar position. Mm -hmm so much respect and adoration and i feel um i feel this is like um so so this is how this is the capturing part um and then also like uh, what i do with men is i help them gain their own sexual mastery which i feel is the essential part of being a king because actually how all of us, but men specifically, and specifically men at the stage of a king, is like how men at that level is able and trained and skilled to handle his sexual energy. It actually has everything to do with his mission. Like I see one-to-one -one parallel between problems in mission and problems in sexual in, in his own sexuality it's like always like there is direct correlation and when we fix one the other one fixes as well <laughs> so um so that's the answer so is, do you work with men in person is this really like a hands-on sort of body work erotic thing happening or no yeah no no i i do not um well I was playing with idea to have like a majority of my work is online. So at the moment, hundred percent, I do play with the idea of having like a, a, a part of it being live as well, but it's not hands-on. It is not um, a body work. It's, it's not, um, it is guidance and guidance around, first of all, around power, because, you know, as Oscar Wilde say, um, everything is about sex, except sex, which is about power. So, so if we have a power problem, you know, we are definitely going to have a sex problem. So, so what do we do? Like we first fix the power problems in, in the life specifically related in, in mission and relationships. And then we get to um, learning how to use the sexual energy, which is extremely powerful, extremely potent. It's like the, the most heightened, one of the most, well, I would say the most heightened expression of the life force. And so how we deal with that tells us a lot how we deal with the power. So, so you're probably getting a sense like my work is all about power and sexual mastery together as a metaphor for each other together and like, you know, one leading to another and um, that's where I operate. <laughs> uh, have you encountered men that are, are just kind of attracted by the sexual energy and kind of think that they're, you know, they're getting an, an escort or they're, they're expecting, you know, not just guidance? Great, great question. I love it. Um, I, uh, well, you know, a, a lot of them are obviously attracted to the sexual energy. Like, this is the part, like, you know, what my clients were saying, like, how we capture them. Right, you're capturing, yeah. So do you, right. do you capture people that have a misunderstanding of what you're offering? Yeah, so this is very interesting because I've never ever had that happen. Um, it's like, I, I feel it, it relates to this part where I told you like, I'm, I'm receiving a lot of respect from men. And um, one of my um, other, um, he is not a client, he's actually like the, the, the person who I told you who helped me with strategic advice. Like he, he was the one who told me like, your presence commands respect, you know? So it's like, um, and I feel, um, so for example, I've never had 
on, on my Instagram, like, you know, I have like my photos like in lingerie and clips of me erotic dancing. And I've never, ever, ever, and I've been doing this for over six months, like I've never received a single comment that was disrespectful. Not a single one. I've only received respect, adoration, and praise. Like I have uh, my followers writing me poems. <laughs> we have a collection of poems by now. And um, I, I feel it, it has to do with the energy that I bring. So I feel, you know, this is again about this siren muse combination kind of like, you know, so. Um, I, I didn't have that happen and um, even if that would be the case like I wouldn't be afraid of that like you know to clarify what is it I do and to um, to guide him on right you know right understanding of what I do but there was there was not a single negative thing about it yeah because you're you're getting you're attracting guys to you that are I think at one point you said like they're like 90, 90 or ninety nine percent of of their kingship, and and certainly someone in that king energy, that royal energy, um, you know, loves and respects the queen, right? It's it's not a dominating, gimme 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 sort sort of an energy. Um, you you used the term alpha alpha male uh, earlier. It's good. Could, what what does alpha male mean to you, and how is it different if it's different from the king? I love, love, love this question because I feel, um, I'll, I'll tell you in a moment, like, what is it that I'm finding around it? But in, like, what I feel, um, there is a lot of misunderstanding around alpha energy. And specifically, what I'm learning from my sex oracle sessions that I run with men is that they're it's them who do not understand the real alpha male energy. So, so first of all, um, first of all, um, there is something that I called um, an alpha male paradox. And this is what I recently found out when I started working with men. And it's like, I, I, I'm curious to, to hear what you think about it. But what I've found through my work is that majority of men believe they are an alpha man or, you know, they run the alpha male energy. And when the reality is that the alpha male, the real alpha male energy is like really rare, super rare. And um, so I was like, I was surprised to find that out. And it was just like surprising to me that most of the men would believe that. Um, and then, on other hand, like through my um, through my um, work with men more closely, I found that um, th there is a lot of men, specifically men who come from from a strong magician blueprint. They would or lover blueprint as well. They would almost like they would tell me like they do not like alpha role models that they see outside they say like no 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 like i don't like that like you know they're overpowering they're like over domineering they're like intimidate everyone they're like confrontational they are you know rapist and like i don't like it it makes me angry and i was again like i was like so surprised to find that this is what they perceive as alpha male energy while from my perspective, I have a completely different um, perception of the alpha male energy. And so I, I explain them how that energy feels in my body as a woman. And usually it's like, it's very, very insightful to them and inspirational. So I tell them how, you know, when I'm in the presence of a real Man, of a man who who embodies a little bit um, or you know full of of this archetype, I just feel like incredibly safe, and I feel like I can be completely in my feminine energy. I feel like I can give him my best. I can. I feel like there's. It, it's also like on a body level, it feels like there's a lot of energy coming at me, but in a very grounded way, in a very um, safe way. 
but at the same time, it's very stimulating as well. And so, so this is usually insightful to them. And um, the problem that I see is that, so if a man has a perception that, you know, all the alphas are, you know, confrontational and, you know, they don't like them and they're rapists and they like, just like, you know, go through corpses to, to get there, um, to achieve their, whatever they desire. Like the problem is because they divorce themselves from this energy that's like pure drive and um, to drive to achieve things, to go for their mission, to build something in the world, to achieve stuff. So, so that's why I feel like I feel so passionate about reviving like a true alpha male archetype. And, and I, I, I personally feel like every man could benefit a little bit from, from this archetype. It, it's actually, in, in a nutshell, it's a warrior archetype. And, um, and if you are, whatever your blueprint is, like if you adjust it, and there are ways how, you know, that, that's what I do with men, like there are ways how you can adjust this energy of drive and couple it with respect and, you know, and, and, and your own blueprint, it's gonna, look different for every man to, to use this and this this powerful and potent drive and energy to actually even amplify your natural blueprint you're born with and not like to go into overdrive and you know to um achieve things no matter what so yes what do you think cool yeah so alpha male has always been a term not, not necessarily the energy, but the term. Guys that identify and say, I'm the alpha, uh, that correlates to asshole to me. Um, I see that the competition, the, the domination, the wanting to win, it's the no, I, I, and I, I, I get a scarcity vibe from the most out there, like there's not enough, so give me, this is mine, you can't have any, you know, that kind of thing is what struck me. Um, I tend to uh, take the alpha male as, I, I, I'll assume that they grew up as a bully, you know, but but again, that's that's it's the distorted lens. It, it's it's not the alpha male energy. It, that's why it's the alpha male term. Um, it's kind of that obnoxious, you know, Wall Street trader. Uh, the people that materialism is the top thing. It, it's th that sort of things are all the the garbage that goes into again my perception of someone saying I'm the alpha male. Whereas, you know, there's certainly men I've met that are strong and are tough and are leaders and take no shit and get things done and make people feel safe, uh, care about people. So, I, I, again, in my experience, it's almost um, like the other term that's all over the place lately, you know, toxic masculinity and alpha male are kind of both distorted. And, and you know, I, my experience is more with the negative aspect of it. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. Right, but I do get that. Yeah, it's the warrior, and that that everyone can tap into that. They're, every archetype has healthy aspects and can have distorted aspects. Do you find mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Totally. And and I love it. Like you know, I'm I'm here. What you're saying. This is what I hear from every single man. Uh, who came in my to work with me except from alphas like you know men who are more embodying that and and it they tell me like it's associated with a negative aspect and it doesn't have to be it is incredible blueprint it's like blueprint that makes us feel safe and you know it, it has like so many and I, I i believe every man can benefit from this archetype first of all like first of all what you're describing to me it's not an alpha male at all like someone who embodies alpha male energy does not have to compete his energy his presence by itself communicates leadership he doesn't have to compete it's just like his presence is getting done half of the things you know it's like a natural leader and um so so it, it's it's sad to me that um that such a potency has you know it's a, it, it has like a, such a strong cultural negative connotation mm -hmm. and i feel the big part of my work is to 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 um, 
to explain to man, to, to sort of like make a peace between a man and this archetype, and then to clear all this negative cultural connotation and to find, find the essence of the true essence of the archetype, and then use this good essence of the archetype in their own unique way. Because it's gonna look very, very different for a man who's predominant magician, to a man who's predominant lover, or to a man who's like a warrior or, you know, who has, like, it's going to look, like, very, very differently. So, it, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like the, the men who come to you, they're, they're self-identifying, they're feeling like they're the alpha male to begin with? Um, n n some of them, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, some of them are, you know, what would be called, like, a typical... We would call them like in a, in a, we would probably identify them in a cultural way as an alphas, but they also, you know, I, I find it, it's never straight. Like it's, we are all combination of all of them and we have like our own unique combination of all of them. And like, it's not, you're not meant to be just one. Like you need all three of them in your own unique balance and way. And, um, but the, so, so for example, the, the more alpha male who come to work with me, I find they have like a very strong lover and, and, and a magician in some cases as well, you know, and this is probably what brings them to me. While also a lot of people who come to work with me are also magicians because, um, be, be, because I feel like what I bring with my artistic side is, um, a lot, it, it, it's kind of like, it's a lot related to magic. So they sort of recognize this in my art and they sort of like, that's, that's kind of their connection um, to my work. Cool. So, so, yeah. Because earlier you mentioned that a, a lot of guys will kind of, and, and I'm seeing that there's a difference. So there's the, the, almost like the personality, the, the identity of alpha male, and then there's the alpha male archetype, which seem really different. And that's the, the true essence and the distortion, perhaps. But mm -hmm. you, you said that true alpha males, it, they're rarer. So a lot of guys think they are, but they're truly not that. So how do, how do guys react to that? If like, oh, I'm an alpha male. Like, well, actually, you're, you're these other things, and you're, you know, you're pieces of different things. And you know, you're, you're not that pinnacle of masculinity that perhaps you, 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 you thought you are or you try to be. How, how do people react to that, if, if that happens? Um, that more have like, um, people, men who believe they're alpha, but they're actually not, usually do not, um, end up as far to become my clients. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's probably not like, you know, it's maybe they're just not ready, you know, and, and that's perfectly fine. Maybe, you know, they're meant to be working with someone else, whatever is the reason. Um, so this is the case. The, the real alphas or men who, who, who carry this energy more and come to work with me like I feel they're very very open to they're aware who they are and they're also open to more you know magical feminine wisdom and inside that's like why they come to work with me right cool yeah, yeah. right to be all-encompassing again what I find to be the distorted notion is that an alpha male is kind of only logical and is only tough and is rigid and doesn't want, yeah, almost doesn't want to be emotional. Uh, might might see some of those things as weakness, but um, it feels like you've got guys that can own their alphaness and also kind of let it be flexible and realize that it's not one thing all the time energetically. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. totally. Yes, absolutely. I also feel it. It, it a lot depends on. On, on a stage where the man is and like, you know, where he is age wise and what is his stage and is he just like finding his mission and maybe as you said, um, still in a nine to five and doing the job that he hates, but you know, it's, it's, it's getting the paycheck or he's like more working on his mission and trying to make it happen, trying to make it successful in the world or he's like more in the later stages and he's like, you know, build something and had certain level of success and is now looking for 
a part of his mission that are bigger than life, bigger than um, perhaps even just his kingdom. And, and his focus is really like on, on living the legacy and something to this world. Cool. And does, does our mix of the archetypes, is it fluid? Does it shift and change over time or is it set in stone? That's a great, great question. Um, I would feel that like you have, you have your unique combination that resonates mostly with who you are on a deeper level. It's like what we would call a soul level, like just as, as your blueprint, but then through different uh, period of, of your life, like different ones are being called to be developed. So for example, like if you are building your kingdom and building um, and trying to get your business off the ground and make it successful in a world, like a warrior archetype would be very, very helpful as would magician. And so, you know, and then as you settle into relationships and that you know lover archetype would leap forward and so there are different phases but there is like um your unique combination you're sort of born with or like you resonate the most with well what do you think yeah i, I mean i would think that if 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 someone is um predominantly magician that the the predominance might shift maybe it's from sometimes from 51% up to 75%, but it's all, it's still always the strongest, but other things can grow and expand. But, but yeah, much like you you can, or being, being the king to me means you can tap in to whatever, whatever aspect you need at that time. And yes. it doesn't, it doesn't then distort you forever. And you're, you're, you know, you're not a broken three-legged stool tipping over. Uh, you're, you're stable in all those areas, but yeah, you can, you can consciously, uh, naturally, intuitively utilize the power needed in, in each given moment. Yes, yes, I love, I love the way you put it. Like, so you can tap into it, it doesn't distort you. Because a lot of the problem comes, because when, when, when a man completely neglects one of the archetypes, like what I was saying, like, you know, man, because they don't like the alpha examples, they completely, um, their drive is extremely weak they almost divorce themselves from this archetype completely. And then it looks like, uh, it can look like, first of all, like, um, so for example, what I see often happening is like, there is a big gap between the vision you have and the drive. So for example, um, a man ha tells me, and he has a, such a strong drive to be philanthropist and he feels like it, it's part of his mission and it's very specific like he wants to feed hungry or you know whatever specific area of philanthropy he, he feels called to contribute but in reality um you know his his life is nowhere near where he is able to do anything about it so there is like a huge gap between a vision and a drive and and it's, it's not even a problem like we all start from from zero but you the problem is because in most cases like there is no any clear plan there isn't to get where he, he wants to get there is no any clear and the reason being because his drive because he's divorced from the archetype his drive is like really really low and it's not matching the vision he he knows he's born for so this is the problem when one of them it's completely neglected distorted you know or whatever happens cool. uh, throughout this you mentioned that a lot of people uh, a lot of men will kind of leak their energy their power what, what are what are some common ways that that a man is leaking his own vitality yes so some of them we already mentioned. So for example, um, not being extremely clear and precise in his mission. This also depends on where he, he is age-wise, but you know, working in a job forever that he hates and it's providing paycheck, that's the obvious one. Um, 
uh, you know, what we just talked about, like a uh, gap between a big vision and low drive, another one. Uh, relationships are usually a really good indicator where I go for diagnostics um, because it, it's, it's also like there is a parallel. I see a lot, what I see happening a lot um, when the man is not fully on his mission, fully like, you know, giving his energy into a mission, like he would this energy would have to come out somewhere and it usually comes distorted and oftentimes come comes out as a lot of say casual you know sex uh, relationship like forever like you know this is like the only pattern he knows and it comes from the same leak because his energy is not focused in his mission of course like his energy cannot be focused in, in his sexuality as well and um a relationship for men relationships are really dangerous way of leaking the energy because it's it's a completely unconscious to them it's I find it's so easy for men, for women as well but I like you know it's so easy for a man to you know this is just fun this is just for, for sex you know like and I know like you know this is not what I want and it's so easy to justify it that way and you know when I uh, but the reality is like relationships are hugely important like they are they, they are kind of like a fixers of our level of consciousness so they kind of like stop stabilize even if you think it's just casual and for fun like energetically like they fix you and stabilize you and it's like it's very difficult to move and you know you can get stuck there forever and you know like i, I usually have to explain them and um <laughs> you know and then um, um you know, um, it, it's it's kind of cl like it's clear what has to be done in such a case. Is you know, if if he is at the stage where he is, it's different for everyone. You know, like for for someone, it might be actually a good idea to open himself. Maybe you know, in 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 uh, a little bit like that. But um, being in a wrong relationship is a lot more energetically dangerous than what people realize. Yeah. It's a really it's really dangerous, quote unquote, on so many levels. No, no, I, uh, I, I, uh, I can vouch for that. I would, I would definitely buy that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and for people that are resonating with this talk of, of archetypes, like fantastic, but I just want to share that when I first heard them, you know, it sounded like just fairy tale stuff and, and wasn't real until you have an experience. So if that's where someone is listening to this, you know, if you get it, great. If you don't get it, great. <laughs> but um, what really helped me get it was it, one of the initiations I mentioned I, was with the Mankind Project, which is an international organization that does weekend events for men. And they really work on the archetypes. And it was seeing different guys embody different things and going through experiences that really woke them up in me and made me realize, oh, yeah, so being a king isn't just some fairy tale. And that if you're a, a strong, capable CEO, you're, you're carrying that king energy. If you're a, you know, a happy, successful dad and husband, you know, you're carrying that king energy. So it, it, it isn't just, uh, you know, rescuing the princess. It isn't, you know, it isn't, don't, don't take that, that name too far into the past, but we can really own it and, and deal with it. So I really, um, I've really enjoyed this talk and I really appreciate what you're doing and, and kind of bringing the archetypes to life and getting mm -hmm. away from the distortions and the, you know, the false identities. Cause that's, that's what I see is such a problem. Men, men are really attached to these false identities. And that's something when people come to you, you can, you're clearing away the falsehood and revealing the truth, uh, the power and the, you know, the, um, the different blueprints that, that as you refer to them. And again, letting people become the leader and creator of their life that we're meant to be. Yes. Yeah, it's very, very real. And the only difference is if we are conscious about it, and then we can control it. And you can like, you almost have like a control board and you can fine tune it and like choose what you want. Or you're unconscious of it. And then, you know, it controls you. Yeah. And you know, if you're lucky enough to have them healthy and, and happy, like your life is great. But what is happening for most of people like they have distortion, or they neglect one, as we talked about it, or you know, 
do whatever distortion of the archetypes happens. Cool. Cool. Um, so Maeve, what, what's the best way for someone that wants to get in touch with you, reach out, learn more? What's the best way to, to find you? The best way would be to go to my website. Um, it is kingsmuse.com. And, um, or the alternative would be probably Instagram page, which is um, at the Maeve Swan on Instagram. Great, great. And uh, wherever you're listening, we'll, we'll have links to Maeve sites and, and social media accounts so you can uh, get that social media experience of her and perhaps talk with her and have a, a richer experience as well. Um, but yeah, I really, I, I love that you're trusting your own intuition and that like life is rising up to meet you there, um, that you've only been doing this for a few months really, but that you're having uh, powerful reactions and, and responses from, from men. Um, cause we, we can't have enough Kings in the world. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, right. I feel the same. We, we can't have enough Kings in this world. Let's make every single man a King. Can you, can you imagine the world? I what can. Would that be like? <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's, <laughs> that could be the new, you know, again, forget the old normal of pre pandemic. Let's have the world where everyone is a, is a noble royal being, a world of kings and queens honoring and respecting each other, working together. Yeah, no, mm. no more distortions and twisted identities. You know that, that it's funny. I was like, that's a magical place. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't have to be a fairy tale. We can create the magic. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, we we can make the magic real. I feel a lot of what I do is like to to tell people like that the, the magic is very real and it could be very real whether is it through art or through my coaching work but like bringing magic into real life is amazing it's what i loved most yeah yeah magic is real again we, we are all creative expressive beings uh unless we deny that and refuse to do it then you know we're pretty much dead inside but um yes. cool so well, here's to living here's to magical beings uh, thanks again, Maeve. Thanks everyone for checking us out today. Um, wherever you're discovering Real Men Feel, share some magic with us, right? Give us a like, a subscription, uh, a review, share it to somebody. Uh, if you want to hear uh, about a future subject, shoot me an email. Um, and until next time, be good to yourself. Thank you for listening to Real Men Feel. Contact us at realmenfeel at gmail.com. Learn more about Andy Grant at theandygrant.com. Please subscribe to this podcast and leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, TuneIn, or wherever you are discovering Real Men Feel.